Hey, good morning, folks. I want to put out a quick word that the Lord has been speaking to me a lot lately. And I'm on my way to go preach here in the in the jails and the prisons here in Washington, D.C. in a few minutes. But I was just thinking about why don't we gain ground with God? Why do we stay stagnant in our faith, in our walk with the Lord? Why can we never progress? And I, I keep running into people that are are continually black back sudden uh, or unrepentant or continue to fall into the same old traps of sin again and again and again and quite plainly it is that we do not want to surrender certain areas of our life completely fully totally and wholly over to God we don't want to do it because we're too comfortable where we're at now we don't know what's on the other side so we don't fully trust God, thinking and knowing that he can make our life a million times better than it already is for his glory and for eternity's sake and for the salvation of other souls. And see, that's what it's really all about is when we get our eyes off of ourself and our own problems, then we get our eyes on Christ and others and self gets taken out of the picture. And just as John the Baptist said, he must increase, we must decrease. And so that's a thought for today is, are you gaining ground with God? Are you becoming more like Christ every day? Are you leading people to Christ? Are people asking you about Christ? Are people telling you that you look different? Is your life changed? Oftentimes I say, if your life has not been changed by the gospel, or by Jesus, then it's likely not been saved by him either. And so we need to take a a serious evaluation and stock in our life if we're to change the world. Because Christians are supposed to change the world. We're not supposed to be world adherers. We're supposed to be world changers. We're not supposed to do the same things that the world does, but we're supposed to change it. We're supposed to change the people. We're supposed to change the culture. We literally don't do the changing in another person's life, but through us witnessing, planting the seed of the gospel in good soil, God comes in with the Holy Spirit of Christ and God and the Holy Spirit together combined three in one and changes that individual's soul over time through a process known as sanctification. And that is where that person starts to relinquish their control of their life over to God and sin falls away and righteousness comes in and blessings flow and it's not just some cliche thing no this is real spiritual warfare Christians have the ability to sin lost people don't they are always continually perpetually in the lost state but we've once known and tasted the bad evil side and why would we ever go back to the muck and the mire it's like the prodigal son it's like the story playing over and over and over and over again why would you want to keep going back into the same old filth that jesus came to save us out of he he did not come to just love us uh, that, that message of god is love yes he absolutely is but he didn't just come to bring love Although, he did bring love. He came to bring truth as well. He came to bring peace, but he also came to bring judgment and wrath. And that is who God is as a holy, separate being from us. The creator of the universe can make up whatever rules and laws he wants. And so he came to save us from our sin because he wants to be with us together. And we cannot have fellowship with him if we have fellowship with darkness in our sin, in our flesh, in the world, and the devil, the three enemies of a Christian. And so how does a Christian gain ground with God more? How's your Bible study? How's your prayer life? How's your church attendance? How's your fellowship with other Christians? And how is your service to the lost and the saved are you discipling saints and are you seeking to help save souls and then get them sanctified 
those that are lost. That is the goal of every Christian. The goal of every Christian is not to see how much stuff we can get in this life and this earth. Although there, there, God does want us to be blessed with all the promises and blessings that He's given us in His Word. But to get grant, but to get ground as a Christian, we must surrender our lives, our whole lives, every area of our life to Christ. If, if this nation is going to be saved with an election impending in just a few days, it's going to be saved by the Lord Jesus and not by any one man or woman. It is going to be saved by getting Jesus to save the souls in it. The only way to save America is to save Americans. That is the only way. The only way to save the world is to get people saved. That's it. We have a hundred years Possibly, each person has, has, has a finite amount of days. Between 0 and 120 years, typically. From the time you're born. You, the, the clock is ticking. And what you do with Jesus today will matter for eternity. It will determine your destiny, both in this earth and in the next. And we need to do something with Christ today to reach out into lost souls, hearts, and minds and teach people what Jesus Christ did for them, how he fulfilled all the perfect prophecies, how he is the fulfillment of them, and not just what he can do for them, but the fact that he can deliver them and save them from their soul, from their torment, from their sins, from their self, from separation from God, and how he can give them the truly abundant Christian life. I'm going to leave this here, but I hope that was a blessing to you. This is just a thought that God put on my heart today. There's many people out there. Let's go forth to save souls and sanctify saints. God bless you.